Listen, I want to welcome all of you guys. We're so glad you're here. This is our first time we're doing this Open Heavens online experience. Welcome to Amanda and Brother Aster. Weren't they so incredible? And you're going to hear more from them uh, afterwards as well. But guys, uh, in a few minutes, we're going to be inviting the man of God, Georgian Badoff. You know, not only is he a good friend of ours, you can keep playing a little bit. Not only is he a good friend of ours, uh, but, you know, he's a father in the faith. He's a mentor in the grace of God. Him and his wonderful wife, uh, uh, Winnie Coco, of course, <laughs> they lead a ministry called Global Celebration. But they're also known as the Apostles of Joy. But I want all of you guys to let us know where you guys are watching from. Amen. I mean, I see a number of names here. Praise the Lord. But, guys, I also want to make some announcements because um, – uh, after uh, George and Dan uh, speaks and shares, at least as an impartation. Amen. You guys hungry? You guys ready for this? After that, uh, we're going to go into a dinner break, okay? I mean, we're, we're treating this like it's a real conference because it is a real conference, except uh, you're not here in the same room, but you are in a broadcast room, amen? So we're so after George and Dan shares, we're going to go into dinner time, a dinner break, two-hour dinner break, and again, an amen, hallelujah, all right? So we're going to come back afterwards, and we're going to have Cat Kerr tonight. And the reason why I felt to do this uh, exclusively, rather than just putting it out live on Facebook for everybody to see, is because we wanted this to be tailor-made of something special for you, amen? So listen, you guys are in for a treat. You share with your friends, invite people to begin to come on, hallelujah. Invite them to come on because uh, this is a wonderful uh, online experience. And of course, tonight we have Cat Kirk. Tomorrow morning we've got Bob Hazlitt. Afterwards, in the afternoon, we have Jennifer Eva. I said, tomorrow evening, we'll get James Gall. Praise God, it's Saturday morning. I'm going to be finishing off and releasing a teaching and impartation. That's going to be incredible. I got a one-week clap on the left, but that's all right, because we only got five people here anyways. But guys, I'm so excited you're here. Let us know where you're watching from. Praise the Lord. We got Rochelle from Indiana and in Indianapolis. Lori, hallelujah. Praise you. Jesus, Ivana, Liam, Sheila Day. Christina Taylor, hallelujah, Meg. And listen, uh, do share. I want you guys to share, invite some friends and family. It's going to be incredible. Are you guys ready for this? I'm not sure, do we have George and Banoff ready and good to go? But everybody, I want you to give a round of applause for the man of God, George and Banoff. Hey, Ben, how are you, man? Thanks for uh, as well, sir. Thanks for inviting me. Um, I'm very, very excited. And this is a very, very special time. Never in the, in the history of the world, the whole world practically, most of the nations are abiding by this locked, locked in, uh, you know, situation. And we're at our homes and we're approaching Passover next week. And uh, n never in the history of the world, uh, uh, never in the history of Israel since 3,500 years uh, when the real Passover took place, uh, that uh, that they were in their individual houses, separate. They were not together. They were all separate in individual houses. And they were instructed to slaughter a lamb, every household, to slaughter a, lamb, a ram and pour the, pour the blood on a, on a doorpost of, of their house, separate from every other houses. And then, of course, brought the meat inside and ate the meat uh, of the lamb. And uh, so this, since then, 3,500 years ago, approximately till today, it has never happened like that before. And this year, uh, next week, about this time, is gonna be the same, this situation where Israel is going to be in separate houses. Cause I have my own friends in Israel that I'm communicating, how are you doing? Uh, and they're talking to me and texting me and and saying we're 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 locked in our houses. We're not allowed to go out except for two reasons: for food uh, in a in a uh, you know in a grocery store or for a medical medications in the drugstores. Those are the only two 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 reasons we should be out. Otherwise, we're inside our houses. So I don't know if. If anybody realizes the significance of this, this is absolutely historic. There has never been such a time as this where all of us, not one country, not one state, not one continent, all over the world, we have this uh, uh, very serious uh, you know, lockdown situation. And I don't know about you, but my 
blood is boiling. I am just on fire because uh, as 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 ever have been a time where we can say for such a time as this, it is now. It practically has never been such a um, a situation globally. And I personally strongly believe that this is uh, something that obviously the enemy is trying to panic everybody, trying to control, you know, some, some talking about this is the beginning of the end time, uh, you know, it's Antichrist government being established, one world order and, and all these things. Um, but, and, and, and this could be also true. I mean, obviously the devil uh, is involved in all this, this, this whole panicking. And of course, sickness. Sickness is not from the Lord. Don't ever, ever doubt that. Don't ever inter- entertain the thought that maybe God is bringing this sickness to judge us or to, uh, you know, condemn us or to even discipline us. God does not use curses to discipline the righteous. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. You're not cursed in any way, shape, and form because you are in Christ. Come on, somebody. Oh, I wish I could see your faces. I wish to see see at least some amens. I'm not sure if I could, if somebody could give me some uh, signals of how people are responding. This is a new software. I've not used it before. Web webinar jam isn't there some like a place you can see um chats or something and some signals anyways uh, it i I don't want to stress anybody if uh, that option is not there but i am sure i'm getting hot i'm sure your heart is right now beating faster because i feel it Ben, I bless you, man. You're an amazing young leader. I, I, uh, I'm getting to know you uh, from the stuff in LA and Hawaii recently. But uh, uh, also, I'm honored to be with uh, a company of, of uh, Prophet Jim Gall and and uh, and all the rest of the people that are, you've invited. So my uh, uh, sort of subtitle is. Apostle of Joy, they call me Joy Apostle, and I'm 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 cool with that. I love the joy of the Lord, and uh, me and my wife are absolute, uh, you know, addicted. You could say uh, 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 addicted to the joy of the Lord. Why are we addicted to the joy of the Lord? Anybody can guess. Well, because Psalm 16 says that uh, in His presence. There is what? Anybody can guess? There is fullness of joy. Come on. Let me see what what the Passion says. uh, um, 16. It says, uh, chapter 16, verse 11. says, for you bring me continual revelation of resurrection life. Wow. Guys, if you don't have the Passion... Pick it up. It's awesome. It's a dear, dear friend of mine um, had um, boldly stepped into the world of translation. He has been a mission, translation missionary uh, in many years for many years in uh, uh, Central America, I believe, or, or South, South America, something like that. And he's been, he and his wife have uh, worked for the uh, the Bible societies and translating uh, the uh, the Bible in a different uh, tr- different tribes and stuff down in that area, but now he has stepped boldly into the the task of. I mean, that's massively apostolic, and it takes a genius for 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 one person to translate the the entire New Testament. Now he's going after the old, but uh, I've been I'm somewhat aware of what it takes to make a translation because I was involved in with our team um, of uh, 
basically my part and global celebration our global celebration team was to raise funds to fund the translation of the new testament in bulgarian language because of the uh our old translations were very like a asian like a king james type version um even more ancient than that uh we actually were reading our uh the the, the bible at least started the new testament in ninth century which is way before the english i don't know if you are familiar with the bible history but uh ninth century the only people uh read uh, the bible were those who speak greek ancient greek or latin at the time and so we were the first language after greek and latin that the bible was was trans the new testament was translated eventually the whole testament and we were neighboring we were neighbors with the greeks and two greek apostles actually macedonians because we we're part of the macedonian empire um, got the passion to translate the new testament eventually the whole bible uh from from greek to to uh bulgarian and then went into uh serbian of course and then up up went into belarus ukraine russia all these countries uh we speak very similar called slavic language anyway this is a little history but um let me get back to the essence of what the lord is doing here he is impacting us with the essence of heaven and by the end of this session you're going to be jumping and dancing and swirling and shouting with the ecstasy of joy the ecstasy of salvation because it says the you show me through continuous revelation of resurrection life the path to the bliss that brings me face to face with you what a translation and in most translations says um the in your presence there's fullness of joy and at your right hand there is bliss forever more and bliss is the same word that brian simmons chose bliss means uh, extreme joy happiness ecstasy of salvation so bliss means like you're going in this ecstatic state in fact uh, stacy campbell one of the other dear friends that i have with uh, that uh we did this, the conference the band's conference over in hawaii uh, wesley and stacy campbell and stacy i i don't know if you've seen her when she get into the the trance with god she gets in this prophetic mood you know um she goes into these ecstatic uh movements where, where her head i can't do it without <laughs> getting dizzy but she's obviously doing it supernatural because you can't shake your head like that and not get dizzy it's it's a it's the ecstasy and she's stepping into this ecstatic ecstatic state of when 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 she prophesied under the anointing um but you don't have to uh constrain yourself just to some shaking of the head or, or hands sometimes I, I i shake my hands uh this is one of the jewish way of of praising the Lord with the waving of the hands and shaking. When I get the anointing, I often go, ooh, like that, you know? And uh, nowadays it's so semi-acceptable, but back in the early days uh, in the 70s and 80s, it was weird. I was like shaking and people looking at me like, what is he doing? In fact, even my wife at the time was very uh, different than she is now. She's totally ecstatic, but back then she was like, baby, please. What are you doing? I'm going, I don't know. I'm I'm feeling the presence of God and my hands are going wild. And she goes, Yes, but you're the only one, honey. I'm going, well, what do you want me to do? I'm just I'm feeling like the hands want to do this, you know. And uh just so I don't embarrass her sometime or try to sit in my hands like, okay, <laughs> then my whole body starts to shake. <laughs> can you feel this anointing right now i mean i'm sort of sound like i'm goofing off i'm not i am serious listen you gotta get serious about joy serious about the joy of the lord it's not just joy when the apostle paul says in in uh philippians 
4, verse, verse 4. This should be real easy for you to memorize that scripture because it's easy. 4-4. Four, four. You know, so uh, let me turn to it. I, I know I know what it says in uh, rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice but in uh, different translation says it differently let me let me pick here in the uh, um, in the uh, what is this translation this is the uh, this is the new living translation I love them all don't you all of them are so so wonderful and uh, I encourage you to read as many translation as you possibly can. Philippians 4.4 4 says, Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again. Rejoice. Now, have you ever thought, thought about that? Why, why is he saying it again? He says, okay, always be full of joy in the Lord. Okay, got it. Let's move on. No, he says, let's let's not move on. Let's stop here. Let's cap. Let me say it again. When when. When, when the Bible says, let me say it again, you know, you need to kind of, okay, you want to say it again, that means stop and listen to this and get what I'm saying, get the message. Woo, ha, 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 ha. Let me say it again. Rejoice. Now, listen, rejoice is kind of a, I don't know what to say. Sometimes I feel like people are taking joy kind of like, yeah, yeah, that's that's nice, but but let's get let's get something, let's get something, let's get something deep. Joy sounds like surfacey kind of like frivolous or like ah, you could take it or leave it. But listen, you can't treat joy like that. Because I'm not talking about just a human joy. The human Expression of it is fine. That's nothing wrong with that. But we're talking way deeper, way, way deeper uh, thing than just, uh, just human joy. We're talking about the joy of the Lord or rejoicing in the Lord. This is, this is very specific. It's, 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 it's relational joy. Think of it this. It's a relational joy. Christ the Christian joy that we're talking about is supernatural, connected to the Lord, connected to the Spirit of the Lord. And the Spirit of the Lord is in your heart, right? So the Spirit of the Lord is in you. And so the joy of the Lord is actually the joy of Jesus or the joy of Christ inside your very own spirit. You know, kind of like I have this computer now here in front of me, and somehow through its mechanics via Wi-Fi, it's going all all over the West Coast, all over the all over the all the world. Anybody connected to the Wi-Fi with particularly logging into this software, I don't understand all how it works, but I do know one thing that you have logged in here and that's why you're seeing me and hear me talk i uh, wish i could see you and hear you making amen or comments at, at this point but nevertheless it's true and i take it by faith so um now this example i give you through the software and you know and the and the web and uh, the, uh, the the website here, this is, in a sense, you could, ex you could explain yourself how you're connecting with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has the biggest technology ever. The, the, the world will never, never catch up with, with the Lord's technology. They try to, you know, imitate it, you know. But, but ultimately, the Lord has this supernatural technology or ability to connect with you and not only with you but with me and then connect us to each other like this particular uh, web web system is is connecting us and making you hear me and see me and so forth so so 
we are first of all through the Holy Spirit connected to the Lord Himself, you know, and our and then also we we are connected as a body. That's why when we pray, uh, we could pray first of all uh, call the whole body of Christ in agreement, in agreement to come into agreement uh, with what we're going to pray. And at the end, I'll just lead lead you out in a prayer for this particular situation. But um, I'm just setting up the fact that invisibly, invisibly, we are connected as a body, spiritually. Whether you understand it or you're not, whether you feel it or not, but we are connected. No less than this uh, Wi-Fi connection is connecting us. And that is a very, very powerful thing to know because right now all of us are connected to the Lord, to God the Father, through what God the Son did. Jesus says, it's better for me to go. And of course, he didn't just disappear. First, he had to endure a violent beating, plucking beards, you know, scourging with with 39 lashes bleeding blood started actually in the garden of gethsemane as he's sweating and travailed for you and me that he was about to go um and be betrayed and then be in the hands of a uh, sinful man and they're gonna do whatever they're gonna do with with him and finally take him to caesar caesar and see uh, and 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 then he finally gonna get crucified so all that spilling of bloodshed and everything Jesus did for you and me. And so that he could um, embrace, first of all, our sickness on his back. You know, by his stripes, we were healed and we are healed. healed. And, and so, so that you are no longer to be sick. Now, the fact that we get sick from time to time. It doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't mean that his his uh, his blood didn't did, did his work. Yes, it did. But we have to believe that. We can't just, uh, you know, it's there. The grace has provided a complete and total healing for every born again believer. However, that has to be believed, just like his. His cross and the cross, he embraced not only uh, our sickness on his on his back, but now our sinfulness, our entire sinfulness. He um, he embraced on the cross, and he became sin at that point, so that um, he could take your sinfulness and your curses uh, away, take it take it upon himself and bury it. Are you with me? On the cross, he he. So on before the cross, he got whipped with his with the lashes, and on the back, he he carry our sicknesses. Then he carried them to the cross, nailed not only a sickness but also uh, curses because it says curse whoever is hanging on the cross. The curse of the law that was the punishment due us went on him. He became punished so that you and I. They were deserving to be punished, and we were sinners and, and criminals for all to forgive all their sin and crime and everything and bury it in the deepest grave. To where I, I love how one translation uh, talks about this, what happened on the cross. This is the the passion, uh, the, uh, the the message Bible in, in Galatians. Oh my gosh, it's it's like so good. Listen to this. Galatians chapter 3, verse, um, honestly can't tell you which verse it is because uh, this translation particularly doesn't have any numbers, but you could see somewhere between maybe 15, chapter 3, verse around 12, 15. It says... Um, Oh, cursed Jesus redeemed us from 
the self-defeating curse life by absorbing it completely into himself. Shara Babara Karasata. Do you remember what the scripture says? Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. This is from the curse of the law. Uh, th this That is what happened when Jesus was nailed to the cross. He became a curse. And at the same time, listen to this, dissolve the curse. He became a curse and at the same time dissolved the curse. Wow. I love it. And now because of that, the air is clear, spiritually speaking. And we can see that Abraham's blessing is present and available for the non-Jews too. If any of you Jews or non-Jews, it doesn't matter for both, is is, uh, is is available. We are all able to receive God's life, his spirit in and within us by believing just the way Ab Abraham received it. And what was what was what was the promise of, of, of Abraham? God told him that from your loins I will bless you and and I will make you a blessing to many nations. Why? Because uh, to, from his loins will come out a son. Of course, Abraham and Sarah, to that beautiful couple, there will come out a offspring, a son. He was really talking about Christ, the seed. But in him, all of us who receive Jesus as, as a Lord and Savior will become part of that Abraham blessing. But recipient you become member of this you you become part of the you become co-heir you become part of the inheritance of this blessing that um and it was uh, about the blessing of having the holy spirit that's why jesus says better for me to leave because if if i don't leave i i you won't have the holy spirit but if i leave and of course he left through the cross the grave and then he was resurrected as i leave then I will send the Holy Spirit. And, and how did that happen? Well, it was in the book of Acts, chapter 2, famous, famous portion of the scripture. Where should I read it? I have so many Bibles. If I show you my desk here, it's like covered with Bibles. <laughs> I love Bibles. The different translation, not just Bible, but different translation. So let, let's turn to the book of Acts, chapter 2. If you have your Bible, please turn to that. It's the end of the Gospels. And now we are into Acts after John. Acts 2 from the Amplified at this moment. I'm reading from the Amplified. Sharaba Shatara Karasatara. Shatara Baba. So, first of all, the setting up is like Jesus, like I say, he went on the cross, in the grave, defeated Satan, mowed down all their resistance, disarmed Satan, the devils, all the devils from all their weapons. The enemy is absolutely defeated. All the curses, the, the power of the curse is destroyed. And also, uh, all sin, the power of sin. I, I mean, I don't mean each individual sinful act that we've done has been forgiven. And, but then also, um, mainly sin, the, the noun, you know, the entity of sin that controlled us and made us do sinful things, that entity, which is not easy to describe what it is, a mixture, basically deceptions and lies, and, and uh, um, in the 
Romans chapter 6, which is uh, a foundational revelation that God's given my, me and my wife. Um, Romans 6, 6 says uh, that the sinful self was nailed to the cross. Our sinful self. And that is the essence. That's where sin started. When Satan talked Adam and Eve into eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And as a result, they, they fell in this, in this abyss of bottomless pit of distortions, corruptions, um, you know, deceptions, delusions, and so on and so forth. It's it just everything wrong with this world comes from that pit that, Adam and Eve fell into this realm of self-existence. You know, they were made by God, like God. I mean, you don't, you don't be more like God. Like God created Adam and Eve in, he says, let us make God in our image and our likeness. Amen. Let us make men in our image and our likeness. I mean, when God says something's going to make, gosh, he, it's going to be incredible. Like he created the, the whole world, the whole planets and things like that and the universe. And then he, he created the, the earth and its beautiful things on it, plants and vegetations and fish and animals and so on and so forth it's all beautiful but then god created man the crowning a glory of of his creation is you know mankind adam and eve and and they were they were just amazing they were just god made them just as much as possible humanly possible to be like god you know and they were covered with glory they were glowing you know and uh um, they were supposed to live forever. It's like, cause everything was perfect. You know, there was no wear and tear. They were just amazing. And, and they were, they had ability to communicate with God. And even like physically, he, he would show up and they would walk with him and the light with another light. Imagine this God is this light and Adam and Eve with these two little lights in it walking and talking, communicating, fellowship. I mean, it was just amazing. And then suddenly, through deception, uh, Satan used a cunning, most cunning of all animals, even though, the snake, right? And even though Adam was given a strict command to guard, to guard the, the garden, to manage it, of course, to multiply, to, you know, to expand, maybe make, more gardens all over the planet. Who knows all that stuff? It doesn't all say, but it says here the whole earth. They sort of like turn it into a, a, the whole Garden of Eden, expand it. And, but then he says, guard it. Why did he say guard it? You ever thought about that? Uh, just one, one time I started thinking about it. Why did he say guard it? You know, guard it from what? You know, and then you realize, oh, well, the enemy of God. And of course, the enemy of man um, is somehow on this planet here, roaming around. And he used a snake, the cunning, cunningness of that snake to come and deceive Eve and, and of course, Adam too. I imagine Adam was around. I don't think Eve has gone off somewhere, but they're together. And and yet the, the snake, I mean, you know, maybe that's what we should have, he should have been guarding. Because well, what else do you guard? Well, from some some animal deceiving your wife. Come on. Stop it. Kick that snake out. Do something. Tell it to shut up. But, you know, Adam didn't do something like that. So um, that snake started conniving and deceiving. And, and eventually Eve got succumbed to... to uh, to get that to, to uh, eat from the tree. It actually says we're supposed to touch or eat it. It didn't say touch it. It just says don't eat it. But maybe she touched it at first and nothing happened. So she just, she just went ahead and ate it. Um, so um, 
that deception came as 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 the as a snake or the devil through the snake challenged Adam and Eve's identity, you know. And he challenged who they are. And she says, Well, did did God really say you're not supposed to eat it? You know, maybe if you eat it, you'll find out something that you, you don't know, but that God doesn't want you to know, type of thing. He he deceived them and they start wondering, hmm, I wonder, you know. Maybe when you eat it, you'll be just like him. Well, they were already like him. So he challenged their identity. And, um, you know, as gullible as they were, and uh, they just they just uh, got deceived and went ahead and ate it. And from that point on, they became separate from God because they trusted the devil. They trusted the enemy. They trusted uh, Satan and they fell into this self, like made their own decisions and acting like God themselves. What? Listen, don't do that. You're not God and you'll never be God. But God created you to be like him in a sense so he could communicate and share his beauty, his wonder, his greatness. But you're not men meant to live alone. Are you... I get there. I get in agreement. You're not man is not meant to live alone, but to eat to to live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Usually, this is uh, connected to uh, food, but it's not it's spiritual. Uh, physical food too, but it's spiritual. We are never meant to live alone with our own thoughts, with our own books, with our own poet with own songs and stuff song all that's good but first and foremost we are meant to live by god's words and and of course you know like i say these to hear god is to talk with him but then all of a sudden now they've fallen they're embarrassed they're shamed they're naked and uh and of course god uh, forgave him. I mean, they were remorseful, so you know God forgave him. But they need more than forgiveness because now they're isolated. They separated. They separated themselves from God. They didn't even realize what they were doing, but now they're separated from God. And God moved them out of the the Garden of Eden because had they stayed there and went and ate from the Tree of Life in this fallen state they would have remained fallen for eternity. And so God does not want that. So he is, is, is moved them out of the, the Garden of Eden. Now they're back. Now they're out there in the rough areas and toiling and sweating and digging and so on and so forth and uh, trying to survive. But they were without God. God was still there, but they could not hear him they could not see him they cannot walk with him it, it was a pitiful pitiful uh state and corruption start to grow eventually their bodies uh, broke down and their cells begin to get old and die it was not supposed to happen like that, but now they're old and dying and then i mean they live for a long time but since then you know the, the human humans live less and less and less now now they live 70 80 it's like wow but um anyways the uh the situation was uh gotten so bad so quickly that even their first born son Cain became a murderer so how quickly you fall from this glory surrounding you and you know and just be like God, close with God and everything. And now all of a sudden, spirit of murder immediately manifested, right? So even though they were forgiven, they were not fixed. The problem did not get fixed at the time. Why? Because God can cover their shame. You know, he took animal skin and covered them. But covering is one thing. But fixing in an inside what what died, what died was the spirit. The spirit, their spirit died. They still had 
thoughts and souls and emotions and feelings. They had their bodies, although their bodies are deteriorated, but their spirit died. Wow. So how do you how do you fix that? Well, goats and sheep and blood of animals cannot fix that. It can cover, but cannot fix that. And so the only way to fix that fallen problem, that Adam's fallenness, is the last Adam, thousands of years later, to come and fix the the fall the problem of the fall of the fall of Adam and Eve. And as the last Adam, Jesus Christ. That's why he had he had to go to the cross. First of all, God had to come in in this human world in the human in the human race he had to be born here he had to come from his heavenly realm and and you know you know how it happened through mary uh through mary's uh, virgin womb you know she 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 remained virgin but she was she she conceived she was she was overshadowed by the holy spirit right she was overshadowed by the holy spirit and she became impregnated supernaturally without it wasn't a sexual act uh it was supernatural act of the seed of god god's word the seed of god went inside her womb her egg actually and then it grew so through that supernatural conception god got inside the human race now god is still god but yet he's now a man and of course, took Joseph to su support her and to protect her. Otherwise, she would have been killed. If uh, at the time, the culture, if a woman has a pregnant outside of marriage, is she going to be stoned? So he he stood by this. Um, I mean, what a radical, radical uh, thing is happening! Like your your fiance, without sleeping with you or sleeping with anybody. Um, she is now pregnant. Go tell your boy, your friends. Hey guys, you know, you see my wife, you see my fiance is pregnant. Don't, it's not what you think. She's never been with any man. Yeah, right. I mean, in the natural, there's no way to, to, for anybody to believe that. But Joseph did believe because the angel showed up and explained to him. So he believed it and he protected it. His fiance, in fact, they left and went all the way to Egypt. And uh, first of all, to Bethlehem, right? But then, then, uh, then all the way to Egypt to uh, be protected from the wrath of the king and so on and so forth. Ah, and now Jesus, baby Jesus is born. He's growing and becoming uh, Jesus as we know him, healing everybody after he was anointed with the Holy Spirit, right? He begins to heal everybody and uh, bless everybody he was basically constantly teaching for the final three years of his life after uh, the holy spirit fell on him during the baptism in, in the jordan river for those of you who never been to israel i'm putting a little plug here for israel because uh you gotta go with us whenever they finally release us our next trip is in february in 2021 and right around Valentine's Day. In fact, Ben, let's let's get go together, man. Let's let's get your most fireball uh, followers. Let's just go together and uh, be become baptized in the same place. Water baptized, of course. You've if you've been baptized once, but special to get baptized in where Jesus was baptized, and uh, Jordan Jordan River. Oh, it's an amazing spot where. Uh, not only where John, Jesus was baptized, but prior to that, Elijah uh, came through uh, before he departed, and he he took his coat off and hit the river, and it parted in the very same spot near Jericho, and the river parted, and he and his uh, follower, his uh, disciple Elisha, they walked together over the dry riverbed, and they got up in in the, the Jordan area. And that's when Elijah, uh, Elijah departed, right? And, and as he departed, he, 
his mental fell on Elisha. Elisha grabbed that mental and went back into Israel and, and hit the river. Where's the God of Elijah? Boom. And the, the river parted, right? <laughs> and it's twice now. But even earlier before that, when Israel armies came uh, and from, you know, the, after the wanderings and they invaded the promised land, invaded right by Jericho and then went all the way up to um, the, all the Canaan lands and stuff. But it was in the same spot where the Ark of the Covenant, you know, the priest holding the Ark touched the feet, the, the feet touched the Jordan River. They didn't get wet because immediately the water separates supernatural. I mean, the places, can't tell you the anointing there. I, 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 just, I just go crazy there. I just started to, oh, Jesus. It's such a place. Three times Jordan separated. And at the end, Jesus was baptized there and the Holy Spirit fell on him and, then, and God spoke and says from heaven, talk about open heaven. This is an open heaven conference. It's, that's when the term started with Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. And when he got out of the water, the Holy Spirit fell on him and God spoke to him. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Wow, that's the bliss of God is in his son. Because Psalm, Psalm, uh, Psalm 16 says, in his presence is fullness of joy in the right hand. What's in God's right hand is the son. The throne of the Son, the Father, the Son, the Lamb, the Son of God, and the pleasure of the Lord. King James says, and at his right hand there's pleasures forevermore. Um, the uh, the Passion, as well as other translations, says there's bliss forevermore. Bliss and pleasure and joy is all that mixed in. That essence of the culture of heaven, this the anointings and, and beauty and glory and perfection and and Jesus fulfilled the pleasure of the father and when he came on earth and lived perfect life as a human never broke one command one law one thing he he was perfect in thought deed and action he was perfection he lived to show the what God is like, God, what God says, I don't do anything just on my own, but I only do things that I see in my father. And that's what I do. And I don't even speak of anything other than what I hear my father do. Isn't that amazing? And, and listen, brothers and sisters, this is what is happening now for you in Christ. Maybe you're not thought about it this way, but this is the way you need to start seeing yourself that in you, physically, like in your in your body, I meant, uh, is the spirit of the Lord. Christ is in you. In other words, not only Christ, but both the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are in you. Shara Babarakasa. This is so good. This is so good. I'm excited about this because this revelation is going to start sweeping through the body of Christ. Right now, there's still sort of like sleepy time. I'm not sure what to call it. There's a blindness of some sort. Even we're born again, but yet we're not quite seeing. The eyes of the heart are not quite enlightened to see that we are just like Jesus was, so are we in this world because he has found a way to not only save us by grace through faith and take us to heaven someday, but he found a way to bring heaven on earth through you and me. So we are the sons of God. Practically, we are the sons of God, sons and daughters, of course, but we all call sons. Even, even girls are called sons for God. 
and so girls don't don't get um, you know <laughs> for us guys we also call the bride of Christ so you you need to deal with the fact that your sons and, and us guys need to deal with the fact that we're part of a bride you know like uh, you know it's a female thing but there's there's no gender in heaven okay so um we are who we are now but there's no gender in heaven and so we need to realize that with his sons his daughters okay and he is our father we our born again spirits have actually sent from above not by the stork but we are from heaven from we're born of the spirit not a will of man or the the you know the strength of man but from the will of the father we're born again from above and what is that part of us that is born again it's a spirit wow our dead spirit ephesians chapter 2 says while we were dead dead and our sins and disobedience and our darkness um let me read it just in case you're wondering i'm not making this up we got to start with the, the bad news. The reality is we were dead. There it is, Ephesians. Wow. All translations agree with it. You know, King James uh, and knew he had quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Um, in the today's English says, in the past you were, say I were, I is, I were spiritually dead. I was spiritually dead because of our disobedience and sins. This is this is what we inherited from, from Adam, right? Hura Babara Karashata. Um, I mean every translation. Dead, 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 dead. This is just one word, one word to describe what we were toward God. And uh, further down in this chapter says in in verse six says verse four excuse me says for god's mercy so abundant and his love for us so great that while we were verse verse five while we were spiritually dead in our disobedience he brought us to life with christ isn't that good whoa he brought us to life who did it? He did it. He didn't do it. He didn't do anything. He just sat there. You were dead. I mean, we were walking dead. We were living dead. I felt I felt that deadness when I was in uh, back in Bulgaria. When I was uh, I was raised in Bulgaria. It was a communist country, and this all knowledge and thought about God or like everything was erased out of forcefully out of the mind of the people. We were like to say Christian country, ninth century. We were living, we were reading the the, the word in our own our own language, and um, we became officially Christian country in one day, practically, because the king the king got saved, and after he read the Bible, he got saved. He was the first one to read, and and when they said you got to get water baptized. He says, well, I'm not going alone. I'm inviting a whole nation. So the whole nation came by the invitation of the king. And we were baptized in the river ninth century. All, all of us, the entire nation. That's, can a nation be saved in a day? That, that had happened, actually, to, uh, to Bulgaria. Well, I mean, whether everybody got saved or not, that's different. But they were all baptized. At least they went in the river voluntarily to get, to get, to get together with the king so um so anyways um i got off on on some tangent here i'm just i love going off on these examples but um anyways by grace we're saved and and um uh, and in our union with christ jesus he raised us up with him to rule in the heavenly world in our union with Christ, he raised us up. So we were this, like I say, walking. Oh, I, was, I remember, I forgot. I was I lost my train of thought, but 
talking about the walking dead. So now we're we're no longer Christian. Um, you know, the, the the Muslims came and ruled us for 500 years. Um, then the communists came. And so now I'm born in this country. There's not a trace of Christianity. You can't see except some old churches. You can see the old buildings still there and these crosses and different things. But it's kind of like antique museum types stuff. It wasn't anything uh, relevant to, to life. You know, the Bibles were confiscated, so I never could read the Bible. And, uh, and so this atheism is ruling. Don't fall for this communism, okay? While I'm on it, I just want to mention that just in case somebody's entertaining. Well, what about socialism? It's just as bad. Trust me. Socialism was created to kill the capitalism, basically. I'm, I'm kind of giving the rough facts. To kill the, 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 the capitalists, because according to the communist uh, theory or, or, or uh, philosophy, the, wor the evil of the world is capitalist. That's the bad thing. So kill the capitalist, and then everybody's going to be nice, and equal is going to be awesome. Well, it's really not like that. They killed the capitalists, took their money, and now the communists are the, the, the rich people. Do you know what I'm saying? That's exactly what happened. So don't fall for this socialism to be nice. They use they use the weakness of people. They use, um, you know, the whole issues with, with the poor and stuff. But, um, you know, but they, they, they become the rich themselves. Do you understand? They, they don't care about the poor. They just want to use the poor to, to destroy capitalism and capitalists so they can be decapitalist now. And that happened in our nation. Now, the, the, uh, the cam communism is gone. So guess who is the, the, the capitalist? The former communist. Now they got the money and now, now they rule, but they don't call themselves co uh, communist anymore. Now they're the capitalist. So anyways, a word, word to the wise, please don't, don't fall for that. The best thing we have in America is capitalism with democracy together. And that's how, you know, those two are made to function and balance and, you know, and no violence, but through peaceful means we, continues to to work together and and uh, and that's just the best thing okay um, let it be okay so um, when I was in Bulgaria I remember Sundays was the most difficult days of the week because during the week you know you're busy going to school noise traffic move around and hustle and this and that and you get busy you're busy and Sunday morning, you wake up and it's quiet. And of course, here in this Christian country, majority of the people are Christian, not everybody, but over 60 some percent, uh, according to the latest polls, are Christians, believe in Jesus Christ. I don't know if you knew that. As you can Google that and you can see I'm not making this up. Uh, majority of our nation are Christians, not just believe in God, but actually believe in Jesus. Of course, counting Protestants and Catholics together. Uh, so, anyways, um, whoo, that tomb feeling, living dead. I felt that on Sunday because there's no church. Nobody goes to church, and it's just quiet and eerie, kind of like it is now. It's kind of a little, little eerie because there's no traffic outside. It's kind of like Sunday quiet. But it's Monday, it's Tuesday, whatever day is today, and Thursday. There's no, there's no traffic because nobody goes to work. And our city, I don't know how's your city, but most people are told to stay home, not to go to work, because of this virus. Well, it's really weird, but it's not weird in my heart. In fact, I, I walk uh, in the evening. I go out to a, a beautiful park, like about 10, 15 blocks away. I just, just walk up there and walk around the park called Italian Park where actually my daughter was was uh, mar married know, a while back. So it's beautiful. It's a beautiful walks and and uh, so it's not like I feel that eeriness. But back then on Sunday it was weird. It was really really eerie. 
quiet and and what do you do with your life with yourself you think it's weird because you know this, it, it's not busy anymore so the deadness that the bible says that we were dead i know what's it like maybe you were born in a christian country it wasn't like that for you because there's so much activity even on sunday people go to church but he, but back then in bulgaria it wasn't like that however when i came to this country the jesus people got a hold of me in los angeles whoa anybody's saved by these jesus people if you're in your 60s 50s 60s maybe you're, you're also saved by the jesus people i was that led me to the lord and the lord uh, raised me and while we were dead he 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 raised us to life with christ wow uh verse six in our union with christ jesus he raised us up with him to rule in heavenly places in this heavenly world and uh and one translation says we are enthroned with him in heavenly realm um enthroned and enthroned us with himself he enthroned us what does that mean you're seated in the, on the very throne that jesus is come on come on come on come on come on whoa we see that see that see that wow i get so excited this is right now my spirit your spirit together i'm not i'm not by myself with jesus you with you with him you with me in in him where we are seated we are seated right now our, our bodies are here but we are seated just like through the wi-fi through the internet we are talking together we are, we are connected so is our spirit we have a heavenly wi-fi we are logged into his domain www.life.org used to be www.hell.disorg <laughs> now we're life.org shara baba casa and we connect it with him we are we are one with him we are in our spirit we are, by the holy spirit we're connected don't ask me to explain there's no way to explain it but we don't need to explain it we need to believe it. Are you ready to believe? Are you ready to believe? You are believing. If if you're not, you wouldn't be even here. But there's more. There's more into discovery. And not just discovery. First we discover and then we experience. We experience. I just release right now an experience for you. Not just knowledge in your mind, but experience in your belly in your gut in your spirit go ahead just go for it just have a bliss break have an ecstasy ecstasy break come on lord jesus saturate lord saturate lord saturate by faith by faith step by faith we're trusting in you we're trusting you. We're getting saturated. Shara Baba, more saturation, Lord. More saturation, Lord. More saturation, Lord. Hura Baba, Kara, Shara Baba, Kara, Sata. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whoa. Whoa. Rabara Baba, Shatara, Kara, Sandara, Kara, Shata. More, Lord. More, Lord. He, Dara, Bakara, Bashita, Baba, Kara, More, Lord. More, Lord. Wow. Ho Shara Baba Kasa. Listen, I'm getting lost in this. I'm getting I'm getting drunk. If if somebody can help me to figure out what we're supposed to do. I didn't really ask anything about time, but but uh uh if uh if Ben, some of your amazing team, um let uh my my assistant Stacy and Stacy if you could let me know. I know we're supposed to do an offering at some point, and I'm I'm excited about that. But there's more for me to share. Do I have more time? It's only seven, seven, eighteen or something. Do I have more time? Just text me. Let me know. Hura babara karashata karashata. I'm still on fire. I don't know about you, but my 
my neck is burning, my, 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 my belly, my heart. I would just, I just feel the waves and the waves and the waves and the waves, the heat, that anointing, the, 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 the Holy Ghost. In a union with Christ, he raised us up. Listen, that union, my wife is totally into that. Something happened. I got disconnected. I was showing you that what happened on the cross, the reason it's important for you to see that, we we were co-crucified. We were co-buried. In the Greek, is 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 co-crucified. And it's also co-buried. And then we co-died. And then we were co-raised. And we co-seated. I mean, that's a lot of Coco right there. That's why when his nickname is Coco, because of what happened to all of us. She discovered that in that Greek uh, original um, uh, in the manuscripts and, and actually through the Bulgarian Bible, that's what it says in Bulgarian. Like I say, it's very old, ninth century translation. So it says co-crucified, co-buried, co-raised, co-seated, co-seated. That's that, uh, you know, scripture in in Ephesians ver chapter 2, verse 6, we co-seated in the same place. The reason is important because you need to know your authority in Christ. You need to know that through you, Christ is speaking his will here on earth. So, so when you open your mouth and, and, and declare the word of the Lord, you materialize his will here on earth. Shara Baba, you need, know, you need to know your union, your connection. You are inseparable. He who joined the Lord is of one spirit. Just like these two hands are tied into one of one spirit. We're one spirit with the Lord. This is the marriage union that my wife is just so passionate about she's merging song of solomon with book of romans 6 7 and 8 is the is the uh, most complex piece of scripture but it is describing our our identity in christ so she merges the love of the song of solomon this brighter love to to prove to you that you are married to jesus Come on, you are married to Jesus. You're not your girlfriend. We are married to Him and we're one with Him. And we're part of His beautiful bride of Christ. Uh, Georgian, uh, I'm just reminded right now that even as a terrible teaching, Georgian, and uh, I'm so grateful. I know our team here, we're listening, we're here, we're so grateful. And I'm sure everybody listening, we're so grateful. But, you know, right now, I really feel like God is one to confirm His covenant with us. He's wanting to confirm the power of his covenant. I mean, this is the gospel of Jesus that we're one with him, that we're forever one with him. And, uh, you know, I feel like, again, the Bible says, Deuteronomy chapter 8, 18, that I have given you power to create wealth, for it will confirm my covenant unto you and to your forefathers. So I, I feel like, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a nutshell, I mean, even in America, God said, I have not forgotten my covenant over America. I have not forgotten my covenant over my chosen people. So that's what I feel in my, in my spirit right now, Georgian, that there's an impartation. There's a reminder and a heavenly glorious celebration of the finished work of the cross, that he did it, it's done, it's finished, and that we're already ruling and reigning with him right now. So, Georgian, I, I want you to just release a prayer right now, and, then, uh, you know, after that, you know, just continue on, uh, as you desire to do, Georgian, in this moment right now. Okay. So, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, we're just releasing that revelation of the authority that we have in you. We are together with one, and with your body here on earth, we're releasing that authority over darkness, over over evil, over this this is a terrible disease we just take be cursed to the root and be removed that mountain of of corona's trouble be removed into the sea and let your people rise right now let them rise let them burn in passion lord let them be on fire for you connecting with you connected with you we're one with you we on on earth as it is in heaven we're one with you there is no separation between us None whatsoever. I empower your sons. I empower your daughters to be Christ on earth. 
to be the, the, the temples of the living, walking Jesus is on earth. Inside us is the living God. We are not God. We're not self-sustained. We're not doing our own thing. We're not rebels. We're not disobedient. We are completely yielded sons and daughters to the Father. It's like Jesus was here on earth doing nothing but the will of the Father, doing nothing but the words of the Father, saying nothing, nothing, but completely yielded to the, to the voice of the Father, to the hand of the Father, to the blessings of the Father. We're releasing the blessings of the Lord. We're releasing God, releasing God's will by the Holy Ghost empowering us to be exactly like you are here, Lord. Heal everybody. We're healing. We are self and divine help. And we are just love nothing. This blessing. Every need Every need is met according to riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And we release that over this neediness right now. We release it over this neediness. And we just fill America, fill fill the body of Christ with the fire from heaven, with the fire from God. Fill, fill, fill. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost be upon us. Let us be the torture, like like Book of Acts, like you fell in the Book of Acts. Continue, Lord, to empower us, to fill us. Not just right now, but tomorrow, and the next day, the next day. Let the eternal fire of God be upon us. We just release your purposes. We establish your purposes on earth as it is in heaven. We establish your will. We establish the body of Christ in the destiny of who you made us to be with the Esthers of God. We are standing before the, the King and He and we are we are asking, not begging, not begging like orphan, but asking like bride who is smitten, who is smitten, the king is smitten by the beauty of Esther, with the beauty of Christ in us. Lord, you're smitten by yourself, you see yourself in us. And so we are establishing the, the will of the Father. We are reversing the curse. We are reversing the Haman curse. And, and we are establishing the deliverance. And I'm not speaking from the corner. But I'm, I'm, I'm talking about harvest of souls. Harvest of souls. Harvest of souls through us. Who the, the, the replica of Christ is in us. You are in us, Lord. So we release the blessing, the, 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 the meeting every need, the prosperity of God, the will of God. Shut up, God. Everything that Adam lost in the garden is restored by Christ. It is finished. It's not going to be. It is restored. It is restored. It is already. And we just believe it. And we say, yes, Lord. Amen, Lord. Let me be a, 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 a restoration. Let me be the one through who you restore things. And let me be the blessing for those around me in the mighty, in the mighty name of Jesus. Honor you, Lord. Glorify yourself, Lord. We glorify you. Glorify yourself, Lord. Let your glory, let your glory cover in the name of Jesus. Especially among young people, Lord. Do you will. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Ben. Take it on. I, I, if you want me to, I, I love to encourage people to give right now, to sow right now in this atmosphere. Listen. Uh, it's not about your money. What is what we about? What we about is about your. It's about your 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 trust in the Lord. Come on, it, it, we're talking about trust right now. It, our giving is only show that we trust the Lord. We we're not afraid of, of anything. The source of all blessings inside us. There's like a bank inside us. There's a like a equivalent better than any banks in the world the bank of heaven is inside you so we as we're giving we're not completing this bank we're just releasing the river of prosperity the river of blessing 
So I just encourage every one of you right now to sow into this amazing ministry that Ben got us appointed. Ben it is so generous, so supernaturally, just just so hilariously. God loves a hilarious, cheerful giver. Come on. Come on, let's let's show that God is inside us through an offering right now. Let's show who we trust. We don't trust in this bank of this world. We trust in the bank that is inside us is the Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. Bless every giver. Multiply the givers. Let there be a hundredfold return for every dollar, for every five dollars, for every ten dollars, for every hundred dollars, for every thousand dollars. Let there be a hundredfold return in the mighty name of Jesus. Woo! Bless you guys. <laughs> Wow, so good. Thank you so much, Jordan. We love you. Thanks for releasing that, the Father's blessing right now. And, you know, we come agreement. There's there's something that Jordan carries. You know, he came from a communist uh, Bulgaria. He came from a socialist, from a communist regime in a place. So there's something that he carries as a breaker and overcoming the slums and the dumps and, you know, coming with a song. Because there's a song that releases power and breakthrough. And, uh, you know, uh, I believe in this time, even as Georgian came as a father, releasing the gospel and sharing the heart of God and the heart of the Father to all of us. Amen. He's breaking off the orphan spirit. He's breaking off shame. He's breaking off any addiction to anything that held us captive. And even it's most, he's releasing supernatural father heart blessings in this time. So, guys, uh, even as Georgian uh, invited you to uh, to give and to donate. You know, uh, the link is below. Our team is just sent in the link. So, you know, we invite you right now in this moment. You know, don't leave this moment. Don't leave this this broadcast right now without giving, without partnering with this ministry. But not just that, but stepping out of faith and obeying our Father, the Father of life, the giver of all good gifts. Amen. So obey and step out right now. The link is down below. And as we do that, uh, the worship team, they're going to sing a song. But come on, because our giving is worship. Remember, the Lord met uh, uh, Cornelius and said, not only has, has your prayers come up, but it's also your giving. I've seen your giving in the secret place. And I believe even now, these challenging times, so-called times of time, these are times for us to give even more. These are times for us to sow even more. Come on, someone say sow. Amen. Come on, there's seed time and harvest, and this is a time to sow. If you said, so I invite all of you, do give. Uh, you know, uh, we, we appreciate it. We, we need uh, the financial help, the blessings to help. Uh, you know, we want to bless Georgia. We want to bless James Gold. We want to bless all these wonderful people. Amen. Are you blessed? If you're blessed, say amen. Amen. So go ahead. The, the links are all there. And uh, we want you to partner in and partner with us. And as we do that, this is an act of worship. As we do that, our worship team is going to sing a song of you uh, for the next few minutes. And then, uh, amen, hallelujah, I'm going to come back and I'll see you guys. Praise God. Come on. For I spoke, you were singing over me.
for us to trust and then you know the bible says lean not in your own understanding trust the lord with all your heart and lean not in your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight i'm telling you friends he's making your path straight right now he's making a way where there seems to be in a way he's about to show up strong for those who call upon him and who who carry his name he's about to show up strong on behalf of those who truly love him amen and do you love him say amen if you love jesus say amen listen guys i'm so excited thank you thank you all of you for joining first and foremost and uh for your grace love understanding we're trying to figure out all this stuff you know all these different things so i appreciate it but really all of your giving your generosity it goes to fund the gospel so that we can be better as a team, we can have better production equipment, quality, different things. But we're experimenting, we're trying, we're growing, and we're becoming. But I believe that there's an open heavens in this online experience for you and me. Amen. I'm really excited. Did you guys enjoy Jordan and Battle? Did you receive fresh grace and manna of the gospel that the curse of sin and death is fully done away with? Yeah. Fully done away with. Amen. We got to go into a dinner break. It's that favorite time of the day. It's dinner, all right? So we're going to go to a dinner break, and we're going to be gathering here again at 7 p.m. And guys, we have Cat Kerr joining. Cat Kerr. All right, Cat Kerr is going to be here with us. Uh, it's going to be incredible, but, uh, you know, as we, have, uh, as we start at 7 p.m., we're going to have the worship team lead us in a time of worship. It's going to be wonderful and incredible. 7 p.m. PST, uh, we're going to start worship, and afterwards we're going to have Cat Kerr. And, uh, you know, this... God is doing something incredible, supernatural. So go ahead, go get your dinner, and, uh, you know, just share the word, spread the word, and we can't wait to see you soon. Amen. Praise God. So blessings to you.